Everybody with a spinal cord injury has a different story to tell. I was snowboarding, hit a patch of ice, went down a 40-foot embankment, kissed a bunch of trees, and uh, came out as a C6, C7 quadriplegic. Last run of the day, I catch my skis under a tree branch. I see the boulder coming, and I can't get my hands up fast enough to protect my head. And it's amazing how the date of their injuries lodges in their minds. My injury was in 2009, getting on dirt bikes and driving down to Mexico, you know, at Baja. I was out in front and um, came upon a washout. My front tire got over, but my back didn't, and uh, collapsed the bike and brought me down onto the seat um, with enough force to burst my T11. So the emotional side of spinal cord injury that a lot of people don't see is the hidden demons that, that you have to live with on a daily basis. You're told you will never walk again, you will live the rest of your life in a wheelchair. And at that point, very much you're in denial and you don't believe it. I could have been safer, you know, but uh, that wouldn't have been me. There is no cure for spinal cord injury, so I did what everybody else does, and you go try to find something better. I'm Ron Triolo. I'm a professor of orthopedics and biomedical engineering at Case Western Reserve University. We're in the motion study lab of the Cleveland VA. We work primarily with people with spinal cord injuries or some form of paralysis. Our team consists of physical therapists, engineers, PhDs in exercise physiology, a neuroscientist who masquerades as a bike mechanic, and really anyone who can volunteer their time. Our team is based here in Cleveland. We call ourselves Team Cleveland. Team Cleveland is participating in the electrical stimulation powered biking event at the Cybathlon. We take essentially an off the shelf recumbent bike and we instrument it so that we know exactly where the pedals are at any point in time. So if we know where the crank is at any point in time, we can adjust stimulation to the paralyzed muscles at the right time and the right intensity to generate pedaling movements. That stimulation is delivered by electrodes that are inserted into the muscle. The pulses are generated by an implanted pulse generator. It's essentially a pacemaker for the skeletal muscle instead of for your heart. When I applied for the program, they had never implanted a woman before, um, and actually Ron rejected me. So I'm a Ron reject. I had to write him back and say, well, 20% of spinal cord injuries are females, and sooner or later you're gonna have to implant a female, so why not me? And then after that, we scheduled the surgery, went into it. My first surgery was seven and a half hours. And then uh, they sent you home on a limited movement basis for eight weeks. But from that point, then you begin your exercise protocol and work your way up to being able to stand. What the system does is I have uh, implants in my lower extremity from my back all the way down to just above my knees. And uh, those electrodes help me to bring back function to the muscles that I are paralyzed. So it allows me to not only exercise those muscles, but also to be able to use them for functional use. My first implant was an eight channel system, so that means I had eight electrodes. And then in 2010, I was upgraded, basically going from eight electrodes to 16 electrodes. So when, you, when you're FES cycling, you can feel the stimulation actually contracting the muscle. Mark runs his own construction company. He knows the value of exercise and he certainly knows the value of hard work. I've been in the program for about four years but only cycling for a couple of months. I just turn it on for a moment and then right back off. In December and then again in January and had the surgery done. The 12-hour surgery that was brutal. In the beginning uh, I was uncomfortable with it because I could feel the wires in my legs and I could feel, you know, the, the openings from the surgery the first couple of days. Uh, it was painful. But then they started hooking me up and I'm, I'm watching my feet move and I'm watching my knees lift and uh, I'm going, hey, you know, this is pretty cool. Uh, this might turn into something. You know, Mark could have had a very different attitude towards this. He could have 
been down and negative, but he's always stayed so positive. That's what's kept us going, is that we have positive outlook that, uh, you know, life is gonna throw things at you, and life is not easy. I don't think life is something that's easy. I think life is hard, and I think if you understand that, that life is gonna be hard, that things are gonna be thrown at you, but that you'll you'll overcome it. You'll get oh, through it. You need a little slingshot, brother? You need a little bit of love? Michael, his energy is just contagious. We're going crazy, baby. Getting implanted, you know, there was a surgery, of course. It was pretty extensive surgery, 12 hours. It's a long surgery. Coming out of a 12-hour surgery, there's that, oh, that feeling, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> Michael was actually the first person we sent a bike home with. He wore us down. It's all about getting on, you know, getting on the bike and just doing it. I mean, you know, if you talk to triathletes, they say it's just about getting out there every morning. It's just about doing it every day. When the race comes, the race comes. So when I got to the race, I just went expectations low. You know, Ron, I think, said it perfectly. He said, think of this as another experiment. I went, I am free. Well, our experiment today, our time trial is gonna be held on an ice rink. The ice has been removed. It's a flat surface at a local community center. It's as similar as we can make it to the competition venue. Um, we will have each pilot do a time trial individually. We have a starting ramp that's built to the specs that will be used in Switzerland and going 750 meters. Each pilot will, will race individually twice and then depending on their times, the pilots with the top two times will compete head to head for first and second place. Who's running for the Cypathlon qualification trial? Yeah. I'm competing I'm against playing. Michael, who's been my friend and He's the guy that got me into the program in the first place. We have a good banter. We both have a good sense of humor. You got your Ben Hur wheels on? Yeah, my little razor blades out my ass. And I can be honest with him and tell him, I'm coming after you. I'm, I'm going to take your spot. Ready! You want to know what went through my head? Set! I'm dog ass slow. That's what went through my head. We may have a false start. Had a false start. The first run, they set me up on the ramp and uh, did the whole countdown to start. And turns out the stimulation didn't come on because the sensor wasn't plugged in. So, I mean, I know going into this that I was much smaller and I was at a disadvantage. But I knew that going into it. And, um, you know, you take that into consideration and you just try to put out the best performance that you can. With, your, with the helmets, because that's changing where they're... I didn't do as well as I thought I could have. I was really disappointed in my first run. I know that if I was able to do a, a better time the second time around. There's two people going, but only one is gonna be the guy. Not only did I, you know, I was able to capture this, this event, the trials, but my, my best buddy, right, is going with me. I mean, it just doesn't get any better. I didn't do as well as I thought I could have, but I still did well enough to be the runner-up. <laughs> Currently, I'm in second place, but uh, he knows I'm on his tail. We're in this to win. Our pilots are all competitive, and I don't think any of them would participate if they didn't think they had a chance to show off what our technology can do on an international stage. The best that can happen, yeah, is we come home with the gold, and that focuses energy on the needs of people with disabilities and educate people on what technology can do. After the walking, everything else has been like icing on the cake. The people that are involved in the program, they're like family. I would be more than happy to tell you if there was a downside. Truly. Truly. But there's not. And hopefully these guys will build on their successes and um, get to a point where maybe it's not just a parlor trick. Okay. Green. Green. Our hope is that when technology gets there, that 
they are able to cure paralysis, that he'll be a prime subject for it because he's gonna be in good shape. You know, any type of sense of insecurity or inadequacy is the complete opposite to being on that bike and riding on that track. I gotta get in the bike every day. I gotta show up. Most importantly, that I still have the friends and they still have me. And uh, life is a lot different, but it's still really good. And he crosses the finish line, yay! <laughs> <laughs> We're not rolling right now, are we? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>